How was that again? <laughs> What's your name? Brian. So go ahead and introduce yourself, Brian. <laughs> okay. And uh, tell us, you know, what you do and what you're passionate about. Okay. Hello, my name is Brian. I am passionate about astronomy, amateur astronomy, looking through a telescope, but also photographing through a telescope, astrophotography. And I've taken this hobby and kind of turn it into a passion, and now I do it for a living, and product development, so uh, research and development, uh, actually seeing products come to fruition, which is uh, really exciting. Uh, I like the astrophotography, as I mentioned, but I like everything that it involves, which includes driving to remote sites in the mountains, camping under the stars, uh, enjoying the terrific scenery, and getting the astronomy out of my system. So I like everything that it entails, including the stars, but also including the fun with camping and in the wilderness and everything that follows it. What are you most excited about in this field? Uh, and a, a little bit more recently I'm feeling a sense of like, a, I don't know if pioneer is the right word, but there's a lot of stuff that's, that's uh, developing now at an accelerated rate and the digital camera technology has a lot to do with that. Um, in many ways, astronomy is slow moving. You can buy a telescope and you're set for life. But now we have different CCD cameras and things that work with cameras, software and electronic things and computer controlled things. Um, that's moving at a much faster pace, almost as fast, but not as fast as mainstream consumer electronics. And as that takes place, as we kind of get caught up with today's consumer electronics and they're blending their way into uh, telescope usage, Actually, apps for an iPhone would be a perfect example. That's actually, that world is starting to meet with our world, I'll, I'll say. And uh, that's where I get a sense of there being, a, uh, you know, like we're kind of pioneers right now. We're in the early stages, I believe, of amateur astronomy to where it's about to become more mainstream, where everyone will probably have something that allows them to enjoy the night sky, whether it's a planetarium program or a pair of binoculars or maybe another comet comes by, maybe there's a new comet Hale-Bopp or a new comet Halley, uh, and uh, something like that is just around the corner and you can kind of feel that it's uh, imminent. And a general trend, what used to cost much more and got you less, now cost much less and gets you more. And I'm trying to continue that trend. Products that are easier to use and products that are less expensive and that gives you uh, more of a wow factor. So you, you know, something that you get, it's easier to, like, the cameras are a good example. Now you can get a multi-megapixel camera. And by the way, I say that, like, that is a big deal. I know that's laughable now with today. You can go to Fry's and buy a $60 camera that's probably six or more megapixels. But to have an, a, a dedicated astronomy camera that's more than a megapixel today, it's common, but it's still kind of a big deal. And it's, uh, it's... That's kind of an example of where we are right now in, uh, in our recent technology. By being less expensive, it becomes more accessible. More people start to become more interested, and you don't get as discouraged because you're getting more instant gratification, as opposed to having to spend such a long time learning how to use, let's say, a system that lets you take uh, pictures of deep sky objects. A full system, you need several components to make that happen. Well, you still need those components, and it's not as easy as point and shoot, but it's every day it gets one step closer to point and shoot. And with each uh, successive, uh, you know, build of a product that we make, it gets a little bit easier, a little bit better, and generally less expensive. What's your favorite uh, object that you photographed? Favorite object? I really like... Um, there's a galaxy in the constellation Cepheus, Cepheus the king in Greek mythology. Uh, it's a spiral galaxy um, called, well, New General Catalog, or NGC 6946. And sometimes, most, most popular deep sky objects have a proper name. Uh, this one is starting to get one called the Fireworks Galaxy. Uh, so NGC 6946, the Fireworks Galaxy. I really like that one. It's very colorful. It's also, it happens to uh, be behind the Milky Way star cloud. So actually that makes it challenging because it's behind a whole bunch of stars that are really obstructing it. But it also makes for the picture to look, you know, it's very full and busy, full of stars, and then the galaxy itself is extremely colorful. What would you recommend anybody who wants to get involved in 
astrophotography, astronomy, all of that? A uh, great way to start would be, I know many people who already have, probably most of you already have a camera. That's actually one way to start. With almost any camera, uh, any point-and-shoot digital camera, you could start taking really good pictures of the moon through any uh, telescope. So some may already have a telescope. If you don't, you can get one that has the ability to track the apparent movement of the night sky. It's not as expensive as you would think. It's just a simple analog motor that ticks away, pushes the mount and the telescope to follow the sky as it moves in an arc as the Earth is rotating. Uh, that's just a basic form of tracking, and any camera, you can couple it, uh, what's called an afocal adapter. Basically, you're just clamping the camera to an eyepiece. It's not very sophisticated, but it's all it's holding the camera from the eyepiece, then you can take a picture of the moon. You could probably also uh, play around with taking a picture of Jupiter and Saturn when they're visible. Uh, and then from there, if you get bitten by the bug, you'll probably know, and you'll start pursuing more. Uh, different sets of equipment uh, for deep sky astrophotography. But to start with, I'd recommend any camera you have, any telescope, start snapping shots of the moon. You'll be impressed with the kind of detail you can get. Really up close features of craters, valleys, maria, mountains. Uh, very, very visible through any telescope, any camera. And uh, anything else that you would want to add? Anything you want to finish with? Um, would it be cheesy to say the sky is truly the limit? Yes. <laughs> yes, it would be. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Yes. Oh, thank you.